Okay, guys, uh, in this episode, I'm going to solve another signaling game, uh, which is relatively difficult than the ones that we solved up until this point, because drawing the game tree is uh, impossible. Um, this is also called as a dispense job market signaling game. Uh, however, I'm going to solve a relatively simpler version of the uh, uh, job market signaling game. So there's a story for the question. So let me read the story or the question itself, and then I'm going to show how we approach and solve the question. Okay. All right. Here is the question. Consider the following job market signaling game. There are three types of workers. T equals two, four, eight, where T is the productivity of the worker. All types are equally likely. Each worker of type T has payoff function W minus E divided by T, where W is the wage and E is the education level. Two firms compete for the workers and hence offering wage equals to expected productivity. So the first part of the question asks, find a separating equilibrium of this game in which all types select different education levels and the highest type selects education level of 38. Then the second part of the question, is there any pooling equilibrium where all types select the same education level, E equals 5? Explain your answer. Okay, <clears throat> so this is uh, the Spence job market signaling game. Um, and the model is actually pretty uh, nice. Uh, there is a player, a worker, uh, think of it as a student. Um, you, uh, you have a, a God-given uh, productivity, let's say. Um, and here it's simplified as two, four, or eight. Uh, so meaning if, you, if you're hired for a job, is, you know, your, your marginal productivity is two unit versus uh, four unit versus eight units. So the, the eight guy is very productive and the two guy is very <clears throat> unproductive uh, relatively. Well, the thing is these guys, um, they cannot prove their uh, productivity levels uh, through their CVs or, 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 or whatever, uh, or interviews. Um, and so, <clears throat> they would like to signal that they are a high quality uh, worker in a sense. Um, and then the only way that they, they, they can signal their quality is through education. So the education does not increase or decrease their productivity. Uh, it only has a signaling value. Well, why is that? Well, because education is costly and this cost is basically captured here. Uh, w minus E over T. The payoff function of the worker is his wage. So the higher wage always makes everybody happier. Uh, however, higher education makes everybody worse off. So everybody actually prefers less education. All right. Uh, but the thing is, if you think of the uh, low productivity guy, we are dividing E by two. However, the high productivity guy this E, his education level is divided by eight. So in that sense, the high productivity guy has less, <clears throat> I'm sorry, education is relatively less costly for the high productivity guy, okay? So the low productivity guy suffers more uh, through his education. Uh, so in that sense, uh, education is good. I want to signal that I am high quality. But the thing is, if I am a low productivity guy, it's going to be, you know, very, very uh, costly action for me. So uh, there's a trade-off. I want to signal that I'm a good guy. I'm a, I'm a high productivity guy, but I don't, I can't really do a PhD for this in, in a sense. All right. So what happens is that the worker selects, he knows his type. He selects an education level and then that's it. Then what happens is the firms, there are two firms, those firms observe only the education level of the worker. There's only one worker, by the way. We don't have three worker. We have one worker of three types. Three potential type equally likely with one over three probability each type. So the firms observe the education level. 
Education, by the way, can be any number between zero and infinite, let's assume, okay? There's no restriction. And it can be any uh, real number for simplicity. Uh, so um, the higher number basically means higher level of education, better university, whatever, whatever, so more challenging courses, higher GPA, think it that way. So the um, the, 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 uh, the, the, the firms observe the education level and then given their beliefs, they update their beliefs. Like, well, is this education level coming from the low productivity guy or is this coming from the high productivity guy? So they update their beliefs. Initially, they think one third is the probability that the worker is a low type. Uh, but, you know, given their strategies and given the observed education level, they're going to update their beliefs. And then with this updated belief, they're going to offer a wage. Each firm is going to offer a different wage. Here we simplify, I mean, the Spence model also simplifies it. This is why we assume there are two firms. They compete in a Bertrand fashion in the sense that um, both firms are going to, so this is a sort of a, a, a place where we fix the firm's strategies as if it's some exogenous, uh, I mean, the wage is exogenously determined in a sense. So the wage is going to be the expected productivity level. All right, so think it that way. So don't, don't worry about their two firms, they're competing with each other and this and that. Well, yes, we can, we can rationalize that like as if they are competing in a Bertrand fashion. And so they try to post, uh, you know, the highest wage. Uh, but the thing is they cannot go above the expected uh, productivity because the exp if they offer a wage above expected productivity, the firms are gonna make negative profit from this worker. And so the, the maximum wage they're gonna offer is the expected productivity. And they don't wanna uh, you know, sort of uh, undercut each other because there, there are two of them, so they're competing with each other. And so forget about all this competition, just assume that the, <clears throat> the student taking or choosing education level E is going to receive expected productivity. All right, so that's the that's the key thing. So the first part, the, is there any separating equilibrium with uh, the highest type choosing education level 38? So we need some notation here. I'm going to denote uh, three different, because we are looking separating uh, equilibrium, meaning each type chooses a different education level. So I'm going to denote it by E, <clears throat> E, E low, E medium, E high, all right? They're all different uh, from one another. Uh, I mean, which one is higher than the other? I don't know, I can't put any restriction. All I know, the question is telling me that the highest guy's education level should be 38. The medium guy's education level, which we don't know yet, the lowest times education level denoted by EL, and again, we don't know that yet, and we're going to find EL and EM. EH is already given to us uh, in the question. All right, well, what else? Uh, that's basically it. That's the only piece of notation I have. Well, here, what's gonna be the wage given this separating equilibrium? So here, this conceptual point is very important. In a separating equilibrium, each type chooses different education levels. So therefore, firms, whenever they observe a certain education level, I mean EL, EM, or EH, they're going to say, aha, uh -huh, it's coming from this specific type. This is what I mean? Let me rephrase it. If the firms observe EL, they're going to say, aha, this is coming from the low productivity guy, because it is the guy who is supposed to choose this education level. The others are supposed to choose different, all right? Different, I mean, EL is different than EM, different than EH, because it's separating. All right, so if the firms observe E, so therefore, if, let me finish my first sentence, if firms observe E-L, well, then wage is going to be 
the product expected productivity level, uh, which is just two. Why? Well, because the worker is exactly type uh, two with zero probability it's four and eight. So therefore expected productivity is two. So wage must be two. So if the firms observe EM, they're going to offer wage four. And if they observe uh, wage EH, they're going to offer wage eight. Okay? So this is what happens in a separating equilibrium. In a pooling equilibrium, it's the second part, but in a pooling equilibrium, whenever they observe the education level that the <clears throat> worker is supposed to choose in his strategy, they're going to say, ah, oh, well, we don't know if it is the high type or the low type or the medium type. So with one third probability, we're going to offer two. With one third probability, we're going to offer four and so on. So I'm going to come to that. But the separating equilibria, things are relatively easier. Well, you can ask the following question. What if firms, uh, if firms observe some education level different than EL, EH, or EM. What if? Huh. That means, what if the worker uh, of type 2 or 4 or 8 deviates and chooses some different level of education? He can, right? They can. Well, then, what's going to be the wage? Hmm. So, here's the thing. According to the strategies, the separating equilibrium, they are supposed to choose EL, EM, EH, which we did not find yet. We will. But these are just three numbers, real numbers. There are a bunch of other possible E's, but the, all those E's are off the equilibrium path because according to those strategies, uh, the, none of the types is supposed to choose that E. So it's off the equilibrium path. And requirement three doesn't say anything about uh, what the beliefs should be. Requirement four also cannot say anything about it because it's off the equilibrium path and Bayesian updating is impossible. So therefore, uh, the, the probability that the worker is the low type or the medium type or the high type, those probabilities, there's no restriction. It's a free parameter. Hmm. I want to find one. I don't want to find all. I want to find one separating equilibrium. So you know what? I can fix this free parameter. Um, okay, so how? Well, Whenever you observe some education level other than these three, let's assume that firms believe it is the low type, I mean type T equals 2, and hence W will be equal to 2. Okay? Can I do that? Yes, I can, because all the education levels other than these three are on the off equilibrium path and hence I can, I can, I can, I can fix that pre free parameter. The parameter here is the belief about type of the player. I can, I can fix it. And how do I fix it? It's the simplest possible way. Uh, let's assume that the <clears throat> firms are going to believe that it's this, this education level must be coming from the low type and hence the wage is going to be two. All right. Again, don't forget, I'm not trying to find all separating equilibria. I'm trying to find one separating equilibria. And so that's going to be the simplest one. I this fix, I mean. Okay, so uh, what's next? Well, next is the following. Uh, requirement three and four is kind of checked here. Uh, requirement one is already because we have the probabilities, the beliefs, right? I'm not going to write the probabilities here because uh, I don't want to <clears throat> sort of kill us with notation. Uh, all we need to find is basically EL and EM, okay? Well, then the question is, uh, what should I do? I should check requirement two. I mean, are these guys best responding one another? Okay, that's the only thing I should do. All right, what does that mean? That means, is choosing EL the best action for uh, the high type, for the low type, and 
uh, I'm sorry, is choosing EL the best action, uh, given that there are a bunch of other possible uh, ELs, all right? So that's, that's, and I have to do the same thing for EM, I mean the medium type and also the high type. So let's look at the low type, uh, type T equals two. All right, the currently uh, no deviation versus deviation. All right, the no deviation meaning uh, he's choosing EL, no deviation, E, different than EL. Yeah, but what exactly? Because depending on his choice of education, his wage will be different. But here, if you see, the wage is going to be, I mean, I don't know if you want to draw all this into a picture. All right, so this is E, let's say. Um, so uh, uh, e, uh, uh, e is equal to, I don't know, EL, of uh, EM, EH. By the way, I did not make any assumption that EL must be less than EH, but let's suppose, I'm just trying to make a point here. So let's suppose this is the case. So if EL, if education is equal to EL, the wage is equal to two. If it is EM, the wage is equal to, is gonna be equal to four. All right, and otherwise it's going to be uh, eight. All right, and everywhere else it's two. So here it's two, here it's two. So circle here because it's gonna jump here. Otherwise it's two, and then again it's gonna jump here, and then otherwise two. So normally the wage will be two, all right, for any worker. For any worker. So if if as a worker you choose uh, other than these three, your wage is always two, all right? Uh, if you choose EM, your wage will be four, and if you choose EH, your wage will be eight, but otherwise, other than these two, it will always be two. All right, for the separating equilibrium, we look first uh, the lowest uh, productivity type, type T equals two. Uh, so his uh, payoff under no deviation versus his payoff under deviation. So there are infinitely many possible uh, deviations, right? Uh, the, in the no deviation, the choice of the education level should be EL, whatever that is, we don't know yet. But uh, EL or education can be anything in between zero and infinity. So there are infinitely many possible deviations, but we can categorize all of those into three groups for the low type, which are, well, what if, this guy deviates to EM, because if he deviates particular to EM, his wage will be four. What if he deviates to EH, in which case his payoff will be, uh, his wage will be eight. And what if he deviates to some other education level, in which case his wage will still be two, but because the education is different, uh, well, the payoff will be different. So the question is, what EL is optimal for the low type. Well, his payoff under no deviation must be greater than or equal to all the payoff of those, uh, all the deviation payoffs. So let's calculate the uh, payoff of type T equals two under no deviation. His wage, I mean, if you want, let's note the wages. Uh, this is gonna be his wage, this is gonna be his wage, and this is gonna be his wage if he chooses this education level and two will be his wage in this case. So his payoff will be wage two minus education level EL divided by his productivity, which is two. In this case, his payoff will be, his wage will be four, education level EM divided by his productivity two. In this case, his uh, wage will be eight he, the education level is EH divided by his productivity again too. And finally, uh, if he chooses some E other than these three uh, um, uh, education levels, his payoff will be this. So the question is what value of EL satisfies two minus EL divided by two greater than or equal to, so this guy must be greater than or equal to all these three four minus EM over two. Uh, well, it should also be greater than or equal to eight minus EH divided by two. And then finally, E minus EL divided by two should be greater than two minus 
e divided by 2. And by the way, this is for all e other than e l, e m, and e h. Okay? So, by the way, these are usually called incentive constraints. So, uh, the low type has no incentive to mimic, deviate, and mimic the medium type. The low type also has no incentive to deviate and mimic the high type, and the low type has no incentive to deviate other any other education level. So these are also called incentive constraints. Okay, so let's simplify those because they're going to give us some relationship between EL, EM, and EH, right? So let's start with uh, this one. So I have two here, four here, so that remains two. Multiply both sides by two, so that becomes four. This two eliminated. Uh, send EM to this side. EM minus EL must be greater than or equal to four. All right, so the education level for the medium type must be uh, higher than the education level of low type, and the difference must be at least four apparently, because otherwise the low type will deviate and mimic the uh, medium type. Well, what about this one? Remember, EH is already given to us in the question 38. All right, so this 2, this 8, so remains 6, multiply both sides by 2. So I'm going to have 12 here, and this 2 will cancel out the multiplied 2. So what do I have? I have 12 minus 13, um, 38, so basically it's minus 26, and so uh, EL therefore um, less than or equal to plus 26. Okay, what about this one? So this inequality must be true for every E level. Um, well, as you see, this guy, I mean this parameter, will increase as E decreases. And so this, the maximum value of this term is 2, which happens when E is 0, and E cannot be below 0. So therefore, this thing, if this thing is greater than or equal to this thing for E, for every E, well, then this thing should also be greater than or equal to 2, because 2 is the uh, upper bound for this. So, you know what? Instead of this, we can just write 2. So what happens? These two will cancel out. Uh, so minus EL divided by 2 is greater than or equal to 0. Uh, multiply both sides by minus, so that's going to change the sign of the inequality. Multiply both sides by 2, so you know what? I have EL less than or equal to 0. Huh. Okay, well first off, the education level cannot be negative, all right? So that's the question, like, what does it mean, negative education? Um, it's, it's not, well, I mean, it's not, uh, it, it's not a strategy, it's not a choice. So therefore, that last equality, inequality basically says EL must be exactly zero. Okay, so if, the, if you want this type not to deviate, uh, well then he must be choosing zero education level. Okay, which makes sense, by the way, right? Because it, it produces, I'm sorry, it uh, brings, it, it doesn't increase or decrease the productivity of a worker or so the wage. So it's just the cost. And so it has only the signaling value. And here, the low type, I mean, he's the lowest type. And so he doesn't really need to signal anything. So he's going to get to anyway. Um, so you know what? He doesn't need to uh, bother with any cost of education. So EL equals zero makes sense. All right, intuitively it makes sense, but sort of mathematically we show that it's also the case. Well, then bring it here. Uh, this all already will be satisfied, obviously, for EL0. So therefore, EM must be greater than or equal to 4. Hmm. So then let's note them here. EL is 0. Let's call star because this is the equilibrium level of education level for uh, low type. And EM star must be greater than or equal to 4. Uh, if these two holds, well, then type t equals 2 will not deviate. All right. Well, I need to do the same thing for type t equals 4 and type t equals 8. All right. So uh, now I'm looking at type t equals 4. Um, in case he doesn't deviate, I mean, he plays his equilibrium strategy, he's supposed to choose EM education level, in which case his wage will be 4 units, all right? Well, what if he deviates? Well, remember, 
Uh, there are infinitely many possible deviations, once again, but we can categorize them into uh, two or three groups, subgroups. Uh, one in which he deviates to EL, right? In which case he gets W equals 2. Um, what else? Um, the, the other one is EM. Uh, the, uh, I'm sorry, EM it doesn't make any difference. He's already playing EM. So EH, in which case he gets wage 8. And any E other than EL, EM, and EH. In which case, uh, because we are looking for separating equilibrium, we assumed that if the players choose an education level other than these three, well, the firms are going to assume that this must be the uh, low type uh, uh, worker, and hence the firms are going to offer wage two. So that means the payoff here is wage four minus his education level EM divided by his productivity four. Well, here his wage is two minus his education level EL divided by four. And here his wage is 8 minus EH divided by 4. And here it's 2 minus E divided by 4. So uh, always divided by 4 because this is his productivity level, T. And wage, depending on the education level, it changes. And also e, uh, the education level changes. So in order for an equilibrium, we have no deviation payoff. I mean, no deviation from uh, the choice EM. This payoff must be greater than or equal to uh, all these three. 4, 4 minus EM divided by 4 greater than or equal to this one. 8 minus EH divided by 4. And then finally 4 minus EM divided by 4 greater than or equal to 2 minus E divided by 4. All right, And don't forget this is for every E other than EL, EM and EH. Okay, uh, well... One thing, this inequality and this inequality, uh, a lot common, right? So, in fact, we can just uh, combine these two and say, you know what? Instead of looking two inequalities, these two inequalities, just ignore this guy, all right? And say, hey, you know what? This inequality should hold for every E other than EM and EH, all right? So, it, it should also hold for EL, I mean. Um, so, we basically reduce the number of uh, uh, inequalities. Okay, so what do they imply? Uh, let's, let's solve them, or let's simplify them, I mean. Oh, by the way, EL we know is already 2 uh, from the previous part. So, 4 and 8 will cancel out, so we're going to remain by 4, multiply both sides by 4, that's uh, 16, this uh, divided by 4 will... Uh, go away. Uh, EH, remember, this is 38 given by the question. So 16 minus 38, this is minus 22. So you know what? EM should be less than or equal to 22. Okay. Uh, we already know that EM uh, should be at least 4, but now at most 22. Okay. Well, this inequality should hold for every E. And this guy, again, this term decreases as uh, increases, I'm sorry, as E decreases. And so its maximum value will be two, which is the case when E is equal to zero. So you know what? This term must be greater than or equal to two uh, if, if you want this inequality for every E. So therefore, uh, simple, you send this four and this two to the other side. We have four, a two here, multiply both sides by four. So this is gonna be eight, this is uh, gone, this is zero, don't forget that. And so what do I have? EM less than or equal to eight. Huh, so if you want type T equals four not to deviate, uh, you also have EM star uh, at most eight. Well, if this holds, by the way, this already holds. So you know what? Uh, this is the inequality uh, that matters, therefore. So EM star can be any number between uh, four and, um, uh, um, um, and eight. Okay, and there's one more type. So we should do the same thing for that type as well. Okay, so I have this type this time type t equals 8. If he doesn't deviate, uh, meaning if he chooses education level EH, he's going to get wage 8. 
otherwise he's going to get two or maybe four if he chooses the education level of the medium type, EM. So his payoff, if he doesn't deviate, is wage, eight, minus effort, EH, uh, the education level, I mean, divided by his productivity, which is eight. If he deviates, however, his payoff will be wage, two, minus EL, divided by his productivity, eight. And if he chooses EM, wage is four, EM divided by eight, and finally, two minus E divided by eight. So, if we want this guy, the high type, to be playing EH in the equilibrium, well, his no deviation payoff should be greater than or equal to all these three. 2 minus EL divided by 8. 8 minus EH over 8 should be greater. So this guy should be also greater than or equal to 4 minus EM divided by 8. And then finally, 8 minus EH divided by 8 greater than or equal to 2 minus E divided by 8. For every E other than EL, EM, and EH, once again, I can combine this inequality and this inequality. How? I can just eliminate this EL guy. All right, so for every E other than EM and EH, this has to be the case, okay? Well, this inequality will certainly hold if it is EH, but it has to hold for every E. So once again, this right-hand side uh, increases for E equals zero. So ignore this, it's just two. So solve it. So what you're gonna get here, six uh, multiply, oh, by the way, EH is 38, right? So what do I have is like, uh, 6 times 8, 48, less than or equal to uh, 38, uh, greater than or equal to 38. Is that tr true? Yes, it is true. Okay, so that means the high type will actually not deviate any other education level other than EM and EH. Uh, I mean, he may deviate EM, by the way. Okay, uh, so therefore I need to check this one. Remember, we eliminated this. So, this eight and will this four will go, so I'm gonna remain by four here. I multiply both sides by eight, so I'm gonna have 32 here. Uh, so this eight will go away. Remember, EH is 38. So 32 minus 38, so this is minus six. So send minus six to the other side, EM to this side. So what do I have? EM, therefore, is greater than or equal to six. Is that correct? Um, yes, if I did not make any mistake. So, you know what? Therefore, I have another condition, EM star should be greater than or equal to 6. Well, so the question is, uh, not the question, um, I analyzed all three types and I looked for conditions under which those three types prefer to choose their designated strategies. I mean, the low type chooses EL, high type chooses EH, and the medium type chooses EM. So what should be the values of these EL, EM, and EH so that these three types have no incentive to deviate? Well, those terms, EL, EM, EH, uh, we already know what EH is, the question gives us, it's 38. EL and EM should satisfy these four conditions. Well, uh, EL star, I mean, uh, the, the low times education level must be zero, okay. And EM star should be greater than or equal to four and less than or equal to eight and greater than or equal to six. So you know what, if this last inequality holds, this will already hold, so it's redundant. So that basically means we have only two uh, constraints for uh, the value of EM. One, EM must be greater than six, and the second one, EM, must be smaller than eight. So, therefore, conclusion, there are many, infinitely many, possible uh, separating perfect Bayesian equilibrium, perfect Bayesian equilibrium of this game where uh, education level of the high type is 38. What are they? Well, EL must be zero. I mean, put star or don't, doesn't matter. And then EM must be in between six and eight. So 
as long as EM in this range, all right, we always have a separating perfect Bayesian equilibrium. So if EM is six, we have one separating equilibrium. If EM is seven, we have another separating. If EM is any real number between this in, in this interval, it is a separating equilibrium. All right, so that's basically the conclusion of this part. I hope that was clear.